Jaguars fans, what would you say if I told you that uh, week four in Cincinnati was the last time you will see DJ Chark play in a Jaguars uniform? Well, it's kind of some of the writing on the wall right now, actually. DJ Chark has just removed all of his uh, Jaguars-related photos and Jaguars-related everything. He took it out of his bio and has officially unfollowed the Jaguars on Instagram as well. He still follows them on Twitter, but he is not a follower of them anymore on Instagram. So who knows? Maybe that's just a little bit of paralysis by analysis kind of thing. But DJ Chark is someone that Jaguars fans have looked to for big plays like this. Run at 30 seconds. Second and five. Jags have a timeout left. Lawrence looking. Lawrence in And like this. From the 41, Lawrence with time, throwing deep, has a man, and he's got a touchdown! <laughs> DJ Chark on the receiving end, 41 yards. Now, he's only played one full season. He has never made it completely through an entire season, except for his one, which was his Pro Bowl year. I give him that. But at the same time, the offense was clicking. That was arguably one of the best offenses we've had in the past decade. You know, probably the second best offense we've had. He, he played very well in that year. Give him Trevor Lawrence. Things just started wonky. You know, ultimately, he only did really play the three full games and then like the first half of the first series in Cincinnati. But he started with 22 targets, seven receptions, and two touchdowns. Yes, the two touchdowns is great. But catching less than, less than half of your total targets... That, that that don't cut it for me. That's, that's a very scary thing. And I think when you expound on his career, that's a very normal thing for him. You know, in 2020, with, yes, the litany of quarterbacks he had, he had almost, he had just under 100 targets. And he only pulled in about 57% of those passes. That's, that's a very scary thing for me with a team that has a massive possession receiver problem. You know, yes, his, yes, his quarterbacks were terrible, but 57% is criminally low in my opinion. Now, Compare that to players like Juju Smith-Schuster, who a lot of people think isn't that great of a a wide receiver. You know, he kind of bounced around in free agency last year, really didn't find a home until eventually he just kind of went back to Pittsburgh. And uh, he had just about, he had almost 69% uh, completion percentage for his career. Christian Kirk, 65%. Two players that are, I would, you know, I would say they're kind of on par with where DJ Chark is in his career. I think it's just kind of that hometown bias that some Jaguars fans put on it that make Chark, you know, they elevate him to a to a higher standard. Chark averages just about 55% career completion percentage. I'm not going to lose any sleep over if we don't retain DJ Chark. We have a massive catching the ball problem. What does DJ Chark do about half the time? He only catches about half the time. And that's what his career stats say. Yes, you know, he's had mediocre quarterbacks, but is he worth franchise tagging? Like last year, the Jaguars franchise tagged Cam Robinson. You know, they said, we really aren't sure about what the market's going to look like. Trent Williams obviously stayed with San Francisco. He was the big fish in the left tackle C. You know, this year they have Chris Godwin and Devontae Adams. Are they going to stay with their respective teams? Chris Godwin was franchise tagged from Tampa Bay last year. So... And then with his ACL tear this year, I doubt he will be receiving a second tag. So Chris Godwin probably will be hitting the open market. And we know Trent Baalke loves his torn ACLs. So more than likely, that is going to be a big, big push from the Jaguars to go after Chris Godwin. Now bringing it back to Chark, the franchise tag for wide receivers is going to be about $19 million. Is DJ Chark worth $19 million? No, he's not. No, he's not. There are players that are making like 22 a year. And you know what their names are? Like Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, players like that. DJ Chark, it does not sit at that table. So with the Jaguars having just roughly about $60 million per uh, over the cap and spotrack.com, are they really willing to spend a th- almost a third of their entire free agency budget on DJ Chark? You know, like they're spending a third of their free agency cap on a dude that's barely caught 50% of his balls. Not with it. Um, And I really do think the Jaguars would absolutely handicap themselves if they moved forward with franchise tagging DJ Chark. I do not think that is an option they should be exploring at all. But if DJ Chark were to leave the Jaguars, I would not be upset. He's an average player that's just, he's averaged just about 10 games. And ultimately the wide receiver group needs a massive overhaul from, from a health perspective and a performance perspective. So, you know, it was a great time you had here, DJ. I loved watching you play. You had some incredible highlights. At the end of the day, I wouldn't be too upset. 
But thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and go Jaguars. How about them Jags? <laughs>